Next up, it wouldn't be an event at Google if we didn't have someone from Google speaking. And so this next gentleman uh, is going to come up and he's going to talk a little bit about empowering your business with data with a slant towards Google News and maybe some other things. Um, please join me in welcoming Chris Jones from Google. Is it? I'm all up. Oh, cheers. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you to Bill. Um, I'm actually going to talk about schema, so this is really interesting. Um, I am not, I'm not previously in the military. I'm not a magician. Um, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to just show you and live by what we have on stage and what's on my deck. Um, quick show of hands. How many of you are in the news publishing or magazine publishing world? OK, 50, 60%. OK. For what I'm going to show you, uh, you're going to be really interested in. Uh, for the rest of you who have content based, so blogs or anything else, uh, it will be still mildly interesting. And if you're in e-commerce, I'm sorry, but we can talk about other stuff after. Um, so why am I here? I want to talk to you about News Consumer Insights. Uh, it is a data analytics framework that we have built specifically for the news publishing world. Um, why am I talking about it? I built it. Um, along with uh, another two members of my team from New York. Uh, I couldn't fly them in, um, so I'm the next best thing. So let's get into it. You, as publishers, are living in a world that is extremely complex. You have so many data streams coming into you. You have your CRM, your CMS, you have your data analytics, you have your monetization data, you have social analytics, and it is tough. Um, it's just a tsunami of data that you have to deal with. And unfortunately, most companies aren't making the most out of the data that you have. And uh, these are your typical marketing slides. It's like 84% of you do not believe your data sources are well integrated. Um, so you're not getting the best data out of your platforms. 60% think marketing measurement tools are difficult to use. They're not kind of plug and play. 57% of you that there are silos within your organization that's going to cause you to say, well, we think this one thing, marketing thinks this, et cetera. And then 89% of you think that you should be going by customer experience versus data. Um, so it, it, they're not good stats. But when we boil it down, you're facing two major problems. <clears throat> Excuse me. You are swamped to data, as I said. and Sometimes you don't understand it. And I'm not being derogatory, and I'm not trying to belittle anything. Sometimes you don't understand that you don't understand it either. For example, bounce rate. There are actually about three to four different definitions of bounce rate, depending on the platform, depending on whether you're in the formula it uses, to the dwell time, things like that. So are they all wrong? Are they all right? They're actually all right. They're just different variations. So depending, knowing what the actual metric you're looking for and knowing that it's universal kind of helps. And then beyond that, as news publishers, you're not thinking as, you're thinking as news publishers or content creators sometimes. You're not thinking like an e-commerce business. And we want to shift that mindset because you are selling a product. Your product is your content. Your content has margins. You have overheads, things like that. So we want to make sure that you really are um, kind of moving towards a more sustainable e-commerce-like business. So what are the answers to those problems? First and foremost, we want to help you understand the myriad of data streams that you have and actually focus in on the data points that we want you to think about. After that, once you have those data points, pull the intelligence out. So what are the actual metrics you should be looking at? And then finally, what are the action items you can do? What are the recommendations that we can give you based on that? So what did we do? Well, first of all, we wanted to, uh, well, first of all, we created the tool. <laughs> but actually, after that, we wanted to give you a universal metric, something that you can use across all your blogs and all your properties, something that you can actually start then benchmarking against. And how do we benchmark? Because you can't benchmark on monetization. And I can get into that a bit more, but essentially, it's not apples for apples comparison. So we needed to bring it back to a universal metric. So we created a universal metric called user value score which I'll jump into. And finally, once we have those scores and those benchmarks, start highlighting, as I said, the actual 
recommendations, the action items that you can take. Very much, if you see X, let's do Y. And that's what we did. So, News Consumer Insights. News Consumer Insights is a data analytics framework based on your Google Analytics data. It essentially does exactly what it says on the tin. It provides insights based on what we can see in your GA. We don't take your data. All we do is just push it through into Data Studio and essentially segment it and add some of our formulas and things like that and give you a very nice looking report, um, but insightful. Um, it's g.co forward slash news consumer insights. If you have a laptop, you can go to it now. But actually, I'm going to run through a demo. And my one ask for all of you today is after the presentation at lunchtime, actually, when you leave, probably not lunchtime, you're going to be networking. But when you leave, go home. Go jump straight in. All you need is a GA account. Those of you with a GA account, as long as you have access, you can do it. You can share it with anyone in the business. So what is the actual framework? It comprises of two things, the dashboard, which we're going to go through, and then a playbook. The playbook is 122 pages. If you're an insomniac, this is your best friend now, because every night you can read five pages, and it will put you asleep. I can say that. I wrote it. It bored me when I was writing it. But honestly, it's, um, you see X, you do Y. It's not one of those ethereal, kind of floaty light, marketing-based playbooks where it's like, everything's great, yada, yada, yada. No, it's, hey, we see this in your report. Go to this chapter, and we suggest you do Y. <clears throat> Moving on. So what actually is the report based on? So remember, I was talking about e-commerce-like framework. So e-commerce, you have your LTV, your customer lifecycle. We all know about that back in marketing 101. So basically moving the user through the funnel from a prospect to a sales. So we applied that type of segmentation to the news industry, or to the publishing industry, I should say, where you start having your casual readers, you move them to loyal, to brand lovers, and then finally paying subscribers. All around, basically, the, the engagement, the loyalty of the user, and taking it back, if we want to think at the most basic level, OK? Um, the more loyal someone is, the more page views they have. The more page views they have, the more ad impressions they have. The more ad impressions, in theory, more revenue. So essentially, you can directly track the more, as users generate more loyalty and engagement with you, more ad impressions, more revenue. And that's obviously the core thing. Money makes the world. So we want to actually help you with that. And we want to actually identify that loyalty brand, the value of those users to you. So that's what we did. And essentially, when we plug in the data, and I'll show you in the report, your 30-day window is literally that. We will cut it all through. Subscribers um, are not in the report. And the rationale <laughs> is most people don't use enhanced e-commerce uh, functionality within GA. Uh, if you do, then there are reports coming. But essentially, enhanced e-commerce will allow you to track paid digital subscribers for your platform. So we focus on these three, because everyone uses a different way of tracking subscribers. But essentially, I can talk to you more about that either off stage or if we have time for a quick Q&A before or later on, I can do that. So, <clears throat> so how do we actually track that value? What is the uh, metric? So remember I was saying it's not apples for apples on monetization. So we went and created use, user value score, UVS, because I hate saying big words. Um, it's a composite metric that essentially is calculated on pages, uh, number of page views, uh, depth, sessions per user, uh, bounce rate, dwell time. Um, it's not a secret sauce. In the playbook, we give you the formula. I'm that open and honest. If you think you can do better, come to me, because I spent about six months on this and racked my brains. But we think this is the formula that will work. But it's in the playbook if you want to build it yourself and build it into some data sets. But essentially, we calculate it for you. And essentially, what that does is it gives you an indexable score of 0 to 100. 0 being terrible, let's be honest, 100 being the best in class. So where does your users fall on that? Where are the segments falling? But more importantly, we, it also allows us to uh, traffic sources. Your organic search is the, the loyalty and engagement, the value they're bringing from organic is X, the um, direct, social, referral, et cetera. Um, beyond that, then, it starts letting us benchmark. <coughs> um, I actually checked this morning. It's updated every Monday morning uh, for uh, EMEA. 
but uh, we have 927 uh, publishers in the benchmark, not 857. Um, so it's constantly updating, we're adding new benchmarks, but it's everything from the Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, Sunderland Echo, uh, you name it, they're in that. So it's the full gambit. And you can say that, OK, against the whole news industry, we're benchmarked 50%. So we're not doing bad. Or we're in the top 80th percentile of the news industry and content industry, magazine industry. Um, so it really helps you. Oop, no, nope, you're taking a photo of me, sorry. <laughs> uh, it really helps you understand where you are in that benchmark. So it really gives you a good kind of understanding. So demo time, because it's usually fun. Um, hopefully it will work. And OK. So you go to g.co forward slash news consumer insights. You get a beautiful marketing website with all the information you need. And essentially, we give you a bit of explanation of kind of how it works, as I've already talked about, the user value score, the industry benchmarks. You click on connect your data, any of those blue buttons, and you're given a data studio report. And essentially, how many of you use Data Studio? OK, a few. Um, it's a very easy tool. Essentially, all you need to do is click on this button, and the list of Google Analytics accounts you have associated with your email address will be uh, come up there. And you just select the property or the view. It then auto-generates the report for you. And I'm just going to quickly run through the report, but I'm actually going to go back to the slides in a second. But essentially, you have the overview of kind of where, how many of your segments. And I just forgot. I didn't mention the date range. So e-commerce is typically on a 90-day date range for LTV and things like that, OK? When we were first building the report and the actual tool, 90-day is too long for the publishing world. Like, it, it just didn't work. They essentially, how many of you can say that you've looked at one article with, uh, within 90 days across one platform? It, or sorry, publishing house. It just doesn't really work. So we moved it back to a 30-day, and then it starts working. Because then you can say, within 30 rolling days, we've had X amount of uh, users or, uh, in X amount of segments. So all this data is a rolling 30-day, updates every Monday morning. So within the 30 days, here's how many casual, how many loyal, how many brand. Then we start looking at the UVS and uh, the benchmarks. If you want to, uh, we do allow filtering uh, the benchmark by your site size, number of users. Um, we can get into that. There's no geography, no language, or anything like that. So if you want only compare me to the top, top 5 million plus users within 30 days, we can do that. But you can all do it. I usually recommend playing around with it, depending. We start looking at your overall, uh, your data versus benchmarks versus best in class. I'm doing good for time. Then we look at the traffic sources and the benchmarks. And then we look at your casual readers. So if I can go back to the presentation. I'm actually going to do a quick uh, run through as if I was looking at a report from one of you guys, right? And what I would see. And then there are things I would recommend. Because I wanted to make this actionable. I wanted to make this something that you can take away with you. So if this was your data, what do we see? Well, OK. Casual readers, 321,000 casual readers who are generating 754,000 pages. So these casual readers are your brand new users within one 30-day uh, session. Typically, it's, one, it's only one session so, and 2.3 page views. Average session length is about one minute. OK, so the top of funnel is healthy. It's big. Okay, And then we start looking at loyal. So loyal are your bread and butter. These are the guys who are generating typically a healthy amount of pages for you. They're coming 3.6 times. Each session is about 3.3 pages. And they're staying about two and a half minutes. So that's healthy. That's really good. 2.1 million pages. I'm, I'm liking that. What I really want to show you is these guys. Ooh. Uh, brand lovers. Typically, you will have this section of brand lovers who are very small. They're the bottom of your funnel. In this case, it's 7,000 users. But they're generating 841,000 pages. So essentially, these guys are more loyal to you. These are what? Let's say 1.5x, uh, 10x um, your amount of pages for these guys. These are your most valuable users. 27 sessions within 30 days. And you'll see this in your own data. These are the guys who are coming once every two days to your site 
on average, but they're the average, the biggest session length, the most amount of pages per session. These are your, if you had a propensity subscribe model and you wanted to kind of target guys for a digital subscription offering, these are the guys you're most likely going to convert. Then we start looking at that as a full funnel approach. If we look at the loyal readers and the brand lovers, that's 36% of all our users, right? And they're generating 80% of the page views. Uh, how many, or who knows what Pareto law is? Anyone? Yep. Yes, the 80 20 rule. So you, in theory, want 20% of your audience generating 80% of your revenue. And it's old school marketing, kind of business, kind of uh, college, but it still makes sense to today, especially when we start thinking about our funnel overview for a publishing world. Because in theory, we want a really healthy, like 80 or 80% 80 of our audience being up here. 15% here, 5% here, but these two 20% are generating the most amount of pages. So you have a really constant flow of users coming through your website, including their loyalty and engagement. So let's look at the casual readers. Casual readers again, the purples. So you'll see desktop and tablet on one side, mobile on the other. So if we start looking at desktop and tablet, 50 out of 100, average score, so this is your data, 1.41 pages per session, average session duration is two minutes. OK, we're a bit low on pages per session on, for desktop and tablet, but we're healthy. We're above average, above the benchmark on average session duration. What I want to actually show you here is these guys. So mobile, 2 million mobile users in 30 days, first one session. But pages per session, 1.2. Average session duration is only 42 seconds. If we look at the benchmark, it's well below the benchmark. We know it straight away by looking at the user value score. So what does that mean? Page speed. Page speed is important still. I'm going to make this quick, but oh my god, if your site is not fast enough, go. Just leave this room. Um, there are three things you can do depending on your skills, OK? So first is test my site, I think, with google.com. Um, it will basically it's an indi industry comparison. Does a quick page speed test of your whole site, and it will basically rank you. Um, so these are the top performers in the news media and publication industry, and it will put your overall site benchmark there. It's the basic one, but it will give you an understanding of where you are and where the industry is. Then page speed insights is the intermediary tool. Again, put in the URL, put in your articles, your videos, everything in that, and it will uh, list out the overall score, score, your first content will paint, index, things like that. And what it will allow you to do then is actually give you a list of kind of best recommendations. If you really want to get dirty with uh, data and stuff, Lighthouse, Google Lighthouse. It's a Chrome Dev, uh, uh, Chrome Dev console tool. You can go, if you can command control C on Mac, um, it opens up this, you go to audits, perform the audit on the page, this is, this is the most amazing thing in the world. If you really want to kind of get into, OK, how do we fix our site? How do we make it faster? Because what you get is <coughs> you get a, literally a list of things that we can fix. And it will rank out the actual individual. For example, if you have render blocking CSS on page, it will tell you the exact piece of CSS that is causing. And if you fix it, how many seconds you're going to save on that page loading. So this is something to do. Run it on your, uh, on your actual blogs or your uh, publications. Give it to your dev team and just go fix this. Everyone have the photo? One second. There you go. <laughs> OK. So now let's look at loyal and brand lovers. Sorry, by the way, I get really enthusiastic about this. More it's data. I'm a super nerd. And uh, yeah. But it, yeah, you know, it's infectious. Yeah. Good. More claps. Um, OK. Loyal readers. <laughs> Um, low readers and brand lovers. So let's look at the data here. So again, blue, benchmark, and best in class. The best in class, by the way, is um, real, real best in class. It's updated kind of every 30 or every day, or every week, and it's real publications. I can't tell you who, but I actually know, and I can tell you what they're doing. So the playbook, when we built, we looked at all these best in class, saw what they were doing, and made sure it's easily replicatable for you guys. Um, OK, what does this tell us? Well, let's focus in on um, the mobile again, because mobile is just above average, 55 out of 100. What I can see is, OK, on actually, sorry, desktop. So sessions per user, 
uh, benchmark is 3.69, so it's above the energy average, but they're still not best in class. So let's get them to best in class. How can we do that? Well, if we want to optimize session per user, we need to optimize frequency. So we need to push the users coming back more every month, every day, every week. How can we do that? I'll get onto it. Then, pages per session. So pages per session, how do we move the user through our site each session? How do we get them to have that one more article each time? More articles, more page views, more page views, more ad impressions, et cetera, et cetera. So we need to optimize the visit depth for each of those users. Now, before we get into what we can actually fix, let's look at the traffic sources. So essentially what you'll see here is in the red line, your user value score for that traffic source, blue line, number of users, and here's the benchmark. So where your, uh, for example, email, the UVS score benchmark for email, if we see here, there, yours is above average. Nice and easy to guess. So let's focus in on these. First thing, search. Uh, yes, I'm a Googler talking about search, but I'm talking about it in the general sense of the terms. Organic search, here what we can see is, okay, our UVS score is above average, great, but look at the number of users. We've still have way to go. So the, the more value we add to this, each user is worth more to us. Then email. Here we can see email, again, above average, but look at the number of users. Let's focus in on getting more users, because again, the more users we get here, the more value it brings to us. Finally, notifications. I talked about kind of direct traffic, or sorry, I talked about uh, bringing the user back to our site uh, consistently. So I want to talk about push notifications. And if we look at direct here on mobile or our desktop, depending, it's, it's good. It's second most valuable users for traffic source. But actually, what we want is to increase the number of users coming. So structured data. Bill talked about schema. Please do it. I can't be any more direct. It is the most important thing in the world. It's very easy. Go to structured data testing tool, plug in your site, and plug in a URL, and it will tell you what your schema is on page. If you don't have it, if you don't have schema, that's a problem. You need to do it. Go to our, our playbook, and we list out four news publications, what we deem is the best structured data for you as a publication. Uh, so news article, video, blogs, imagery, things like that, making sure it's all there. If, you if we see errors, on, uh, you see errors on your structured data, fix them. If you see warnings, fix them, because you need to have your structured data clean. Think of it like a foundational. Before you start doing anything else, you need the foundation right first. Um, also, go to your uh, webmaster tools slash whatever, you, if you want to call it, search console. In there, we actually tell you the structured data problems as well, and the URLs linked. So it's a nice, easy way to kind of deep dive and get it fixed, but very, very important. Newsletters. Um, I can't be any more serious about this. Newsletters, uh, email in general, as a traffic source, is the most important traffic source you have either you're either in or you are, have coming to your site they bring the most engaged loyal users to your site if you think about it how many of you get up every morning and on your way to work you open up your phone you're checking social media and then you check your emails and then you have a newsletter in there and you click through it's like it's the exact same for publications users do it so if you do not have a newsletter, or if you have a newsletter sign up that looks like this, just hang your head in shame. Um, you, yes, all you need is the email address. You do not need birthday. You do not need first name or last name. Think of it as like when you're trying to get a first date from someone, you just want their phone number. And that's the same for here in email, OK? Because it's just that one step to get you in the door. And that's it. Um, once you have their email and they've signed up and subscribed, then you can start engaging with them. Then you can start cross-selling. So start with, if I'm in a cooking section of your site, offer me a cooking newsletter. Don't offer me general kind of knowledge, OK? So personalize it per the sections. Yes, you end up with multiple newsletters, but actually a more engaged audience and better open rates, better click-through rates, things like that. Placement. Um, bottom of article, actually, no, three-quarter way through article. Uh, is usually a good placement for a widget for email sign-up or right-hand side. We're not blind to the right-hand side completely anymore, um, what we're noticing, so it's usually a good placement. And um, in the playbook, uh, how many of you use instant articles? Yeah, a few. Do you know the call to action for email in there, where it's automatically populated your email address, and you can just sign up for an email? Um, I basically spoofed that for the web. 
There's a piece of code in the playbook that you can just take. It's using the autofill Chrome features and uh, Safari feature. So essentially what this turns into is a two-click sign-up for your uh, newsletter. So someone clicks here, it populates their email address, they click subscribe. Nice, simple, easy to use. All the details are in the playbook. Oh, actually, in the playbook as well, if you do have emails already, newsletters, what we have in there for you is best practices around open rates, uh, click-through rates, uh, building the email, HTML, everything you need. Uh, push notifications. Um, we are all used to push notifications now from our phone. So on desktop, it makes sense as well. And as long as you are HTTPS, you are eligible for push notifications. Um, they work fantastically well. If you want to build it yourself, uh, Web Fundamentals Guide will allow you to do it. Uh, pros, full ownership, it's all yours, no uses cost, et cetera, et cetera. Cons, dev time, it's literally work for you. If you want to go third party, uh, it's usually more customization section settings. Uh, it's easy to use um, and it's kind of quick to launch. Downside, the data is going through a third party. So if that's a problem for you, that's a problem. Uh, and also users cost, they usually have contracts, it's rolling, it's based on number of hits, things like that. So I'm not saying one is better than the other, I'm saying each to their own, try it, but it's important. It's really, really good. Um, I have one publisher, a case study coming up soon. Um, within one week, we launched this for their publications, 200,000 unique signups in one week. That now drives 50,000 unique from that 200,000, 50,000 uniques daily coming from direct notifications. And that increased their page views and uh, revenue by 25%, just by this. So if you think about it, that's how important it can be to you as an organization. Now, uh, internal recirculation. Outbrain, Taboola, Google Match Content are fantastic, but they usually, if it's an ad, it pushes people off your site. That is a problem. Um, because the more paid, longer they stay on your site, the more page views they have. I'm not saying get rid of it. It's mon money. I'm never going to tell you not to earn money. What I'm saying is prioritize your own articles. If you have 10 spots, go 50-50. Try 60-40. See what that right blend is where you're still getting the right amount of revenue, and then you're still getting um, the users staying on your site. So find that. Each to their own, but it's very important. How many of you have digital subscriptions? or some form of paywall. OK, we've got one, two, three, great. Um, I have a framework for you, too. <laughs> it's great. Um, OK, if, if you're even thinking about digital subscriptions, think about your potential buyers. Then start thinking about collecting feedback, i.e. the pricing strategies, back to the four Ps, subscription benefits. Then we start thinking about the, removing the friction points, so the UX, call to action, things like that, enhancing the promotion strategy, and then obviously converting them to subscribers. So what does this do? So surveys, very quickly, I've got about three minutes left. Um, this is actually a real survey we did with a publisher. Okay, And what you see here is which two benefits would be the most important to you if you paid for a subscription to X and users could choose two, right? So this was all the ones they listed out. And they were positive these were the best subscription benefits they had. And we were like, I don't think so, but let's run a survey. 30% of people said none of these benefits were why they cared. I kid you not, it literally this showed us that, no, these benefits that you're highlighting, these people don't, well, 30% of people don't care about this. And I, this is what's important to them because it helped us go back to their strategy and go, okay, let's think about these benefits again. What are the most important? What else can you add? Um, I worked with Business Insider recently. So BI Prime is their uh, kind of uh, freemium, premium kind of content. And this was their uh, kind of sign-up page for the wall. And we have a case study coming out soon, which you'll be able to read on the website, of how we did this. But essentially, we helped them move forward um, with their this BI Prime freemium model. The first thing we did, can anyone see the difference? We just added cancel any time down the bottom of each of the buttons. See it now? A tiny change bumps the amount of users coming through. Because people were like, oh, no, it's, it's, it's a year long kind of subscription. I'm not down for that. I don't even know what's behind the paywall. Adding those two small pieces of text, four words, actually increased subscriptions. Then we did the full UX change. So we moved it to this. 
again, we kept cancel any time. We basically changed the layout. We used um, colors make a big difference whites and oranges and reds and greens. There's a whole UX psychology piece around colors and call to actions. But um, we settled on orange, and this worked. This is really increased subscriptions, and I'm going to tell you how much in a second. Next, uh, if you have GA360 in uh, Ad Manager, um, essentially uh, house ads are great for targeting your users and actually pushing bespoke, um, excuse me, bespoke subscription offerings to them within property. So actually, results, because I've been talking for about 30 minutes now, and I want to actually tell you that this does work. First things first, LMC, or sorry, no, Lee Enterprises. So we worked with them um, using these frameworks, both subscriptions and the NCI framework, News Consumer Insights. And what we did was increase their digital subscription 3x month over month. So it does work. Next, BI, as I told you. All those changes plus a few more, 150% increase, percentage increase in subscription revenue in one quarter by focusing in on the right things, looking at the UX, looking at the benefits, and then 40% increase in higher share of long-term subscribers um, in two months. Essentially, the retention rate of these users, because it's a freemium model, we were able to increase it by 40%. Next, Johnson's Press. Uh, for those in the UK, you'll know these guys. Uh, we started working with them on uh, email, on newsletters. Um, these are the benefits, but essentially we grew their email traffic from zero to over, now I think it's about five, but back then it was about 2% of total traffic to all their sites. So it's a whole new traffic source for them, brand new users coming through. Independent news and media, INM, so the Irish Independent. Organic search, so we worked with them on their schema. We worked with them on fixing problems in the structure, uh, structured data, fixing problems everywhere. What this drove was a 10% increase in organic search traffic because they were coming up more often. They were being chosen. They were showing up. And that grew their ad inventory by 39% and programmatic revenue 22% year on year. This shit works. I kid you not. Focusing on the right things, thinking about the framework, it all works. And up here, we have news consumer insights. We're working on ad sales stuff because this we know this works, so we can actually start thinking about frameworks outside of there. We're working on consumer revenue for subscriptions. And more importantly, if you have editors or writing teams, we're working on tools for them too. This is the beginning. We want to ensure, we want to empower you with data and at a benchmark level. Thank you very much. I know I'm slightly over time. Uh, G.co forward slash news consumer insights to try it out. I don't have time for questions now, but I will have time at the panel later or grab me at any of the breaks. Thank you very much, people.